Hey guys, Alton here. I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel and welcome you to our eighth installment of our Linux Fundamentals for Ethical Hacking series where I'm teaching back to you guys what I learned as I personally learned ethical hacking. So for today's video, we're going to focus in on user and group management in Linux. Specifically from the command line interface, I'm going to show you how to identify what your user ID is or group or groups that you're associated with. I'm going to show you how to switch from one user to the other. I'm going to show you how to add users, remove users, add groups, add different users to different groups and remove groups. So we're going to go through some basic things with user and group management. So let's jump over to my computer screen and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So like I said, we're gonna be focusing in on user and group management, and we're gonna do some basic commands, some basic user management and group management commands to help familiarize you with the basics within Linux terminal. So I'm gonna start off talking about user management, and then we're gonna to jump to group management. So the first command that I wanna talk about, which I've already printed up here on the screen, is the who am I command. And what it does when you type in who am I, it tells you who you're logged in with. So this is good if you get shell on a remote system, but you're not sure who you're logged in as, you can simply type who am I, and it's gonna display the name of the account. Very simple enough, right? Now, what if you wanted to see the list of all the users on a system? Well, we could concatenate which remember, this will display the output of a file onto terminal. We can concatenate the etc password file. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So simply type in cat, etc, password, enter, and this is gonna be a list of all of the different user accounts. And you're gonna notice if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, and you actually saw it near the top as well as there's an account for Alton as well. And we're gonna create a test account on this as well, but there's all system accounts in here as well. So this will allow us to view all the accounts on the system. So let's go ahead and let's clear this screen. So Control L to clear the screen. Now let's talk about how would we switch from one user account to another. So I'm, I'm logged in as root, but let's say I wanted to go to the Alton account. Well, we're simply gonna do the SU command. So if I do what is su, run a command with a substitute user and group ID. So essentially switch to a different user and terminal shell. So let's type in su alton and let's hit enter. And now you notice that it shows that I am alton. And if I type in who am I? Well, I'm Alton, I'm no longer root. Now, I don't wanna stay in Alton, um, but I do wanna show you one more thing. So there's the ID command. So what is ID? This is gonna print the user and group IDs. So you have your username, you have your groups that you are associated with, but there's also IDs associated with them. So we can simply type in ID, and it's gonna give me the user ID and the group ID for Alton which is 1001. So let's go back to root. Let's clear out the screen. Let's do su root. Now for root to get into root because this is a system administrator account, I need to type in the password for root. So I type in the password. Now I have shell access as root again. So if I type in ID for root, you're gonna notice it's a different user ID and group ID. Simple enough, right? Well, what if we want to learn what groups a uh, username is associated to? Now. Uh, user can be associated to more than one group, but within the system, I haven't done that. So to do that, it's a very simple command, groups and then username. So if I type in, let me clear the screen again, groups, and we'll say Alton. Well, Alton is a member of the Alton group. Well, what about root? Groups, root. Well, root is a member of the root group. Simple enough, right? So this gives us some basic information in regards to understanding who we're logged in with and the basic information about them. Now, what if we wanted to add a user? Well, there are two different ways that we can add a user. We can use the add user command or the user add command. So what is add user, add a user or group into the system. What is user add? Create a new user or update default new user information. 
So they have different functionality. I'm not going to get into all the detail regarding that. But with add user, when you create a user with add user, by default, it's going to create a home directory for that account and add them to a group. With user add, it's not going to do that. So, and it's actually not with a group, but with a home DIR, home directory. So I want to make sure that I have that correctly. So if I do this, it'll create the username and all sorts of associated information with the home directory. If I do it without, with the user add, then it's not going to do it. So we'll create a couple of accounts. So let's create an account with add user, add user, and we'll say Tom. Now it's going to add the user, it's going to create the group, it's going to add the user to the group, create the home directory, create the associated files. We have to add in a password for this account. Let's go ahead and enter it and confirm it. And then I'll just leave all this blank. You can add in all sorts of other information. Just confirm, yes. And now the user's been created. So we created a user called Tom. Let's create a user called, I guess, Bill. So let's do user add and let's clear this out and we'll say bill and voila we didn't get any sort of a prompt for any additional information now if I do a print working directory to see where I am I want to get out of here I want to go back a directory and let's print working directory so now we're in the root so let's go to CD home remember that's where all of the home directories are for non root account so if you're not a root user all home directories aren't here let's do an ls slash lh and you're going to notice that it created a home directory for tom but it didn't create one for bill so that's the difference between both of those so if we want to delete a user well we could delete bill simply by using this user dell and we don't have to worry about anything because bill doesn't have a home directory so we'll type in user del bill oops and it helps if I don't do a typo there we go so now bill has been deleted now what if I want to get rid of and let me just go ahead and do an LSS LH again because remember Tom does have a home directory what if I want to remove Tom and the home directory well if I do user delete the user del command it's only going to delete the user account but if I want to remove the home directory as well I need to use the command called del user space space remove home and then the username so let's go ahead and let's remove Tom and Tom's user home account so the question is well, why would we want to leave the home directory versus removing it well for auditing purposes and having auditing trails when an employee leaves an organization you typically disable the account or remove it but you want to keep the associated files but if you're at home and let's say you're just leading an account you don't need those files anymore and you want to free up some space and you can get rid of them so it all depends on your policies and procedures and whether you're in an actual organization where you want to keep those documents for auditing reasons, then you'd want to have them. But if not, then you can go ahead and delete everything. So let's go ahead and get rid of Tom and his user directory. So del user space space or sorry dash dash remove dash home and the username is Tom hit enter and went ahead and removed everything. Now you're gonna notice here, it says that the group Tom has no more members, but it also got rid of the Tom group as well. And we can confirm that by going down to group management and displaying the group folder or the group file, I should say. So it's in the ETC folder again. So we would just concatenate that to display it out to our screen. So let's clear this out and let's confirm that it got rid of that. So let's do group. And you're going to notice that if I scroll up through here and down, there is nothing that states Tom or Bill in here. So let's do Control L and let's re add. Let's go up to here and let's re add Tom. So let's add user Tom. And I'm going to go ahead and type in a password and leave all this blank hit yes okay re added tom now let's take a look at this groups file again and you're going to notice down at the very bottom and let me just kind of hit some enter so this comes up a little bit here's tom there's a tom group now 
So it, it exists. Now let's clear this out and let's talk about how we can add a group, how we can change a user to a different group, and let's talk about how we can delete a group. So it's very simple, right? So to add a group is just simply add group and the group name. So let's say that I want to add in a group called developers. Or let's say I wanted to add in a group called accounting. Let's add a couple groups in. So add group, accounting, and this would be for accounting department. Done. Let's add group, and let's call developers. Now it's done. So we, it's as simple as that. We created a couple of groups. And if we concatenate the group file down at the bottoms of it, they've been added, and here's the group IDs associated with them. Simple enough. Now, what if I wanted to move a user to a group? Let's say that Tom is an accountant. So Tom should be placed within the accounting group. Very simple enough. We use a user mod in dash G, and this is going to tell us that the primary group is going to be the group that we assign him to. So user mod dash G, and the group that we want to move him to as his primary group, accounting. And then the name of that person, the user account, is Tom. And now Tom is within that group. Now what we can do is, what well, remember up here, if we type in groups and username, we can confirm that his primary group is going to be that now. So let's type in groups, Tom. You'll notice that now Tom, his primary group is accounting. Now I say primary because a user can be associated to more than one group, but they have a primary group. And so you want to make sure that you set their primary group to the appropriate group, but you can add them to additional groups as well. Simple enough, right? Now, what if we wanted to delete a group? So let's concatenate the group file again. And so we added Tom to here, so we don't want to get rid of that. But Tom is no longer part of the Tom group. We don't need that. We don't want that because we are doing role-based type of access control and we don't want to have a Tom group. So let's delete the Tom group. So let's clear the screen and what we're going to do is simply type in Dell group in the name of the group that we want deleted. So Dell group Tom enter remove the group Tom. We can confirm that by concatenating this file again and you'll notice that down at the bottom and I'll just hit enter so it's a little higher that it's no longer there. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video. I just wanted to cover some really basic things with group management and user management. Showing you how you can add a user, how you can remove a user, how you can look at some basic things such as telling you who the current user is, concatenating the list of users, switching to a different user, pulling up the IDs for the group and user IDs, looking at the group that a username is associated with, and doing some basic stuff with group management as well. So concatenating out the group file, adding groups, removing groups, and switching a user to primary group. So hopefully this was beneficial. If you learned something, if you enjoyed it, please give this a thumbs up and please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thanks for watching my video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.